Hi, my name is Darren Austin, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the scopes. So the scopes in Resolve are really adaptable. Uh, if you're working on a laptop or you're working on a large screen, you can really find a configuration that will work for you. So down here, we're currently looking at the keyframe editor. If I click here, you'll see we have now uh, one element of the scopes. And this I button here just gives us clip information and uh, general project information. So clicking on here, that gives us just a one up view of the scopes. And if you want to see more than one view, you can actually expand the scopes out of this little uh, part of the GUI here. So by pressing Command, Shift and W, you see that it expands into a much larger view and we can change the size of this quite easily. We can move it around. You can even actually put this onto a second monitor. So if you're running a dual screen um, system, you can actually put this to fill the entire screen on a separate monitor. So really flexible there. There are in fact five different scopes in here, but we can only view four at a time. But if I just show you down here, we've also got the CIE graph. So I will explain all of these scopes throughout this episode, but what I really want to get across is some of the more unusual menus and how they work, and also give you some tips and tricks on things that you can do using the scopes. So before I do that, there's one user preference that you need to look at for the scopes, and that's up here. DaVinci Resolve Preferences. So here in the system and memory and GPU option, you have this checkbox called use GPU scopes. So since version 16, the scopes have been GPU accelerated. So they're much faster, much better response time and much better quality than they used to be. The downside of that is obviously it's using a bit of your GPU processing power. So if you're on a laptop or a less powerful machine, you might find that these are a little bit slow to run. So you can deselect it here. If you deselect the use GPU scopes, you do lose the CIE graph. So if you do have good graphics capability, keep this checked on because you're going to get much better quality and much faster response time out of your scopes. Okay, so up at the top here, we've got our different viewers. So we've got a single view, we've got a dual view, and we've got the quad view. And each of these different views can have a different item in it. So I can change the waveform to be a vector scope, and I can change the vector scope back to be a waveform. So you can decide easily which scope you want in which box. So the main menu for the scopes is here. At the top, we have a low pass filter, which will basically filter out any signal noise. So if I press this, you see it cleans up our signal to give us a much nicer display of the scopes. It becomes much cleaner and clearer to read. So to complement the low pass filter, each different scope has a sub menu. And in there, you've got something called extents. And what extents does is show you the actual extent of the reading that it's taking including what's been removed with the low pass filter so it's quite nice to have that on to complement if you take the low pass filter off next we have this video level scopes i'm going to show you this a little bit later in this episode because it's quite specific what it does so the display qualifier focus is a really useful tool for analyzing your image so if i switch on my qualifier wherever i am in the image is displayed now on each of the scopes so can you see i'm looking for my white level here Okay, black levels, skin tone, wherever I am, I can see it clearly on each of the four scopes. So it's a really useful tool for analyzing your image. Back to the main menu. The ratio allows us to view the scopes in either 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Now, if you're on a small screen, if you're on a laptop, you might want to just put them onto 4 by 3 because you're still getting the same reading across, i.e. from left to right. We're still getting the whole image, but we're just showing it in a smaller area of your GUI. This ratio has nothing to do with the video aspect ratio you're working to. It's just the shape of the scopes. And then we have a quality button. So this is deciding what quality the scopes are running at. So you can have low, medium, or high. Again, totally depending upon your uh, graphics card capability. Uh, if I put it onto auto, it will work at the best quality it possibly can. So let's start with the waveform. The waveform measures luminance. And in the submenu here, we have several options. So we're looking at the minute at red, green, and blue channels together. We can isolate any one of those channels, so just the green channel, for example. Or we can just look at the Y value on its own. Now, at the minute, it's set to colorize. So this is a new feature that it kind of shows you which color is being represented. So this yellow handle here, you can see quite clearly is here. I tend to take the colorize off because I like a cleaner view. Let me just move this over so you can see what we're looking at. Uh, so zero is obviously our black level. 1023 is our white level. And we can adjust the brightness to so each of the different scopes has the same uh, setting here. So you can change the graticule brightness and you can change the actual display brightness. Show reference levels will give me an indicator line set to the value that's here. So at zero, it's on the bottom and 1023 is at the top. And I can adjust that to be whatever I want. I'm gonna show you how to use that a bit later. 
CBCR is the blue channel minus luminance and the red channel minus luminance. I don't use this at all. I tend to work in the Y channel only on the waveform and I use the parade for my RGB levels. So moving on to the parade and the parade is showing us our red, green and blue channels all at once. Into the submenu, again, we've got the colorize. I leave the colorize on on this, then I can see which channel is which. Sorry, let me move that over. And we've obviously got the extents again, which is showing us the extents when the low pass filter is enabled. Uh, there's just little bits of video that you might not be able to see on the scope clearly, but are actually present in the signal. Uh, you can also have the Y channel on there at the same time. I tend to just work with RGB because I've already got the waveform up over here. And again, you've got the YCBCR. Again, it's I don't use this at all. And the rest of these options are exactly the same as in the waveform. So into the vector scope menu, and you see here that we have colorize again. So this yellow handle is quite clearly being displayed here. I don't like to have the colorize on in the vector scope either. This is exactly the same as the waveform before, the extents again for the filtering. Um, what you do have up here though, is the ability to not analyze the entire image, but you can just have a look at the low, so the shadows, the midtones and the higher areas. Okay, so this is really cool. And you can adjust that range using the low range and high range sliders here. So for looking, if you put it onto the high, you're actually just looking at the um, top highlights. And we can see here that basically the smaller that dot is, the less saturation there is. So a, a single dot in the middle would be pure white. So we've got pretty good white levels there. Let's have a look at our blacks. And slightly towards, um, slightly warm, I would say, uh, in the blacks. And of course, our midtones. So let's put them all back on again. And if we put the extents back on, the combine is giving you the low, mid, and high as an extent range. I'm just going to take those off. And down here, then, so what you've got on here is the uh, show skin tone indicator. So if we put that on, this line here is um, perfect skin tone. So what we can do is. This is a little trick. If you take a window and put it over her face and then put highlights on, you now see that it's only showing this region. In fact, if you want to get that more accurate, you could actually pull a key on there as well. So we're now just looking at the skin tone itself, but it's quite hard to see what level it's at. So if I go back to our menu, you can do now a two times zoom on that and you're getting a much better indicator. So the rule of this is you want to be sitting on that line or slightly north of it, slightly to the right of it. Uh, you certainly don't want to be to the left of it. So if I just adjust the hue down here, you'll see what happens if you go below it, you basically get a green face. So you definitely want to be on the right side of it. So that's the vector scope. So the histogram is showing us a percentage of each channel across the entire image. So we have our black level here and our white level here. And we can also go in here and show YRGB. So you can actually have the Y channel as well. I tend to just stick with the RGB. And again, same settings as we had before. And so the fifth scope is the CIE graph. Really useful for HDR grading. Um, I don't tend to use it for SDR grading, but my project timeline is set to Rec 709. So it's showing me the Rec 709 gamut within this boundary, which is basically all visible light. Um, I can compare the Rec 709 gamut to other gamuts. So if I go into the submenu, I can add additional gamuts. So if we wanted to see where Rec 2020 is lying, we click on here and you see you have a much larger gamut in Rec 2020. So I'm reaching, definitely reaching the edge of what Rec 709 is capable of showing here. You can see that in that corner there. Um, I can zoom in and again, if you middle mouse click, you can zoom around that. So again, really useful for HDR grading. So let's take a look at the video level scopes. I'm going to try my best to explain this as clearly as I can. So if we click on this one up view, we're going to look at just a waveform. So we've got a scale from zero to 1023 and resolve is always processing in full data range. So when I take my lift, for example, and push it down, as soon as the blacks go below that line, they start to get crushed. Let me undo that. Same with the highlights. Let's push it up. And as soon as they go above that line, they get clipped. You can see that there. Okay, now let's undo that. The actual level at which black gets crushed and which the highlights get clipped is 64 for the black level and 940 for the highlights. It's just always been displayed on the scopes in this mode. So if we go into video level scopes, what it does now is change to be in the correct parameters. So there is our black level 
and that's at 64 and our highlights shouldn't go above 940 which is about here now the problem with this is you can't actually see where those lines are so what we can do is go into here and add our own this is what the show reference levels does so i'm going to go into low and i'm going to type 64 and i'm going to go into high and i'm going to type in 940 and you see now we get two new reference lines and these are the levels that we want to get our blacks and whites maxing out at so let's bring our lift down and you see when it goes beyond this 64 line we start to get crushed blacks let's undo that same with the highlights let's lift our gain up and as soon as we go over that line, we get clipped. But what's different about this view, I'm doing exactly the same amount of movement, but in this view, I can see how much it's going over by, and indeed how much it's going under by. So we can see how much we've got to play with. Whereas in the traditional mode, all you get is this clipping. So it's the same amount of level. The processing isn't changing. The amount of grade isn't changing. It's just the way that I'm viewing it on the scopes. So in the video level scopes, I can see much clearer what's going on. And just to clarify, if I switch between normal level and video level, nothing happens to the image. The image is not changing. It's just the way that the scopes are representing that image. So I hope you enjoyed that episode on using these scopes. Please leave me a comment. It's always nice to hear from you. I've had some great feedback so far from my other episodes. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, check out my Facebook page called Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve. It's full of really useful little tips and tricks. I'm Darren Austin. Take care of yourself and I will see you in the next episode.